here we are uh, beside San Antonio. I will tell you um, real quick that when I started submitting for 2020, when I was submitting talks, I specifically um, had a talk with my boss. I was like, can I do a bunch of talks this year? And they're like, yay, we support you. Um, and I chose all the locations that I really want to go to. So I wish I was actually there, as I'm sure all of you do as well. Uh, however, um, the forces of the universe have decided that today my air conditioning doesn't work. So it's almost like I'm there because it's like 85 degrees in my office. So yay. Um, but anyway, I, when I submitted the talk, I called it best practices. And then I'm saying, but I still need a job because of everything that we're going through right now. So. Okay, so we will go through a little bit um, talking about um, not just the challenges that we're facing right now, but also um, the just the fundamentals that I that I typically talk about. So when I built the talk initially, uh, all of the crazy stuff that we're going through wasn't going on, um, and so I had to switch up my slides at the last you know. Um, last few weeks, I was like, well, let's let's change this up so that it's relevant to what we're all going through now, and then we'll go through some of the fundamentals as well, to include searching, networking, uh, interviewing, and negotiating. But also, let's talk about what we're all going through right now real quick. Who am I? I am Kirsten Renner. I am K Renner on Twitter. Uh, as mentioned, I'm the director of recruiting at an analytics firm. Uh, we also do full spectrum cybersecurity and have a growing office in San Antonio. 300 jobs open at the moment, we pay referral bonuses. That's my one and only plug. Um, I'm a college dropout. I started my uh, career um, doing a little bit of help desk and tried developing, wasn't super awesome at it. Um, and then since 2000, I've been recruiting, started off in telecom, and I've been doing uh, strictly cybersecurity, information security since the early 2000s. Um, you can see here some other talks I've spoken at recently, plus um, a handful of other B-sides. A little random tidbit about me. Um, I like to run ultra marathons. If you don't know an ultra marathon is anything longer than a marathon. Um, I've done 13 of them in 10 years. Um, so uh, I also love baseball and I love, I have a weird love for murder TV. So have watched lots of murdery things. Um, so I, I've heard, and you all, if you've been in track three very much today, you've uh, heard a lot of different career um, based perspectives and opinions and advice that's all super valuable and all different perspectives. Um, nothing is right or wrong. Um, Frank just said something amazing that I, I, I feel like you took it right out of my handbook because um, it, I'm going to talk about how we can pivot and, and what you need to do to do that. And if you didn't hear what he said, it was amazing. Uh, if, it's being, if it's being recorded, you should go back and listen to it. But it's about um, identifying that just having a willingness and an, an ability to do something is the number one qualifier. So I die on that hill. Um, that was an amazing thing for him to say. So that's me. That's a little cartoon of me. Um, and it, it's just letting you know it's a little game board. Um, I've, I am a hiring manager, I have been a recruiter, and I've been a candidate uh, in the course of my career. So I'm coming to you with how I uh, view things from all of those perspectives. So again, things are a little bit crazy right now, right? We're all adjusting, we're all adapting, we're all dealing with it. Um, I think that we can take this like any other challenge, and we can... Um, we can say, well, how can we use this to our advantage? One thing you can do to use uh, the current circumstances to your advantage is you can notice um, how the prospective employers are, are treating the candidates. Um, how flexible are they? How accommodating are they? Um, and, and ask yourself, well, in my day-to-day -day life, um, as a human, like every other human, things come up, you know, things in my personal life, things in my family, shit happens, right? So how accommodating will this company be to me 
as an employee if they if they can't work with me to to make the interview work or uh, to be flexible all throughout the candidate experience. Um, one of the one of my my specific brand um, wouldn't mind if they just put this on my tombstone. I I believe in the candidate experience. I believe in the value of the way we treat people is really what matters, right? So every person that uh, for the people who aren't candidates or who are candidates and potential employers listening to this, every person you want to hire, someone else also wants to hire them. So think about that uh, through the candidate experience on how you're contributing to it, how you're behaving in the interview, um, how you're treating those people who have many other choices typically um, think about how they're being treated. Um, so that can be very revealing to you at this time. Um, who's ahead of the curve? Who's doing the kind of things Frank was talking about where they're willing to invest in people and train people and that sort of thing. And notice that, you know what? Um, I don't have this or this or this experience, but, um, but here's what I have done and here's the way I think and here's how I solve problems and here's what I'm willing to do. Uh, if you would give me the opportunity. So before, um, so at the end of 2019, I uh, started doing little mini surveys on Twitter and I, and I did them knowing that I had submitted talks and, and, that, um, and that I wanted to go through these basic fundamentals uh, in those talks. And so I think I did three or four surveys and it's not scientific data because I think there's a, uh, certain number of people that has to respond to it before it's actually considered it. I don't think tens of thousands of people responded. It was in the hundreds for sure, but um, I, I was not surprised that most people are passive. So understand that as you hear all the things in track three today and all the things from your peers and your mentors and all the advice and all the best selling books and all of the experts that tell you, you know, how to be a good candidate, how to find the perfect job, um, know that you will take those and you will you will use them in a toolbox that makes sense for you at your specific stage of candidacy. Um, and that may be that you're actively looking. Let's face it, most of us need a job. Either we need a job because we'll be bored or we need a job to keep the lights on. Um, so you're going to look at your job search in different ways um, another thing that Frank mentioned, I obviously really enjoyed his talk, um, was uh, something with regard to was a statistic uh, as to how long it actually takes to find a job. Um, I and mean, it was very interesting. Um, but obviously, if you're always looking or at least open to hearing about uh, positions while you're currently employed, if you have that opportunity, if you're fortunate enough to look in that situation, it's more ideal. Um, I can say that my last two jobs, including my current job, wasn't looking for a job um, when I was made aware of the position. Um, so it was, it's a good, a better uh, position to be in. Um, so we're not all in the same stage at different points in, the, in our candidacy. Stuff happens, like I said earlier, and something out of your control might occur, and then you find yourself looking for a job and you weren't expecting it. Or maybe you're just not loving what you're doing. That's a good time to just start peeking around and talking to your peers and finding out what's out there. Um, Dork Vader did say that I could quote him when he responded, I believe, to the survey. He, he commented that uh, no better time to be looking than uh, it's just really good basic career hygiene to be always um, at least leave the door open. So um, here's the sorts of things that we're facing in the interviews. Um, hopefully I provide halfway decent examples. I'm definitely not following all the things on this list right now. Um, but when you're doing your virtual interview, uh, there's a lot of challenges that you're gonna be facing. Um, it's really, really important to test the tech. Uh, I just happened to be the person who, when we were testing all the speakers, uh, my camera wouldn't work. I had to, it's a long story, I had to run out and get some equipment. But um, so test it, test it, always test it, test it with your friends, test it with yourself, invite yourself to a meeting, do what you gotta do, make sure that you can be seen and heard and that you can see and hear as well. Um, go ahead and put all of your, um, if, you, if you can, 
Um, make sure there'll be no outside distractions. Um, I will be shocked if anybody wants to know the over under and put some money on it right now. Um, my big giant floofer, if you've ever seen any tweet I've ever done, every other tweet is my dog. Um, there's a good chance he'll bark at some point today. Um, we just moved, uh, we used to live, for 12 years to live down the country. Now we live in the neighborhood and he's uh, very distracted all the time. So he'll probably bark for us today. Um, that's okay. That, remember what I said about watching how the companies reveal things. So if your kid rolls up or your dog starts doing something, or something happens or the tech goes wrong or something, if the employer uh, reveals themselves to be very unflexible about you just being a normal human dealing with all the crap we're dealing with right now, then, then they've just revealed something to you about, about them, about who they are. Um, I'll tell you a really quick story. Um, when I did the Many Hats Club Isolation Con in January or February, um, I was testing out in the green room. I was testing my tech, and I uh, hope he doesn't mind the shout out. Uh, Ray Redacted is, is the person who was helping me. And um, <laughs> when I say close all the things, I'm serious. Um, probably, if you're anything like me, you have many iterations of your browsers going at all times. You know, four or five at a time, and and 20 different tabs on each on each browser, um, and maybe even you have several documents open. When I shared screens with him to show him my slides, you know what came up on his screen? My credit report, my social security number, my date of birth, my credit score, and he's a hacker. So for sure, close all the things. Um, and if you know the dual core song, hack all the things, you know, I just put that in your head. So sing it to yourself. Close all the things. Okay, um, so distractions are everywhere. We talked about that. Um, Social media is more important now than ever. I get it if you don't like it. I get it if you don't enjoy it. Uh, there's different um, ones that we like or that we don't like, uh, regardless of what it is that you use um, or don't use. Be aware of the digital footprint that you're putting out there. I'm not saying don't be a human, um, but people are watching you probably more than ever You know, now. This is how we're connecting. This is how we're networking. This is the only way we're seeing each other is out there on social media. So be aware of even the things that you, see, you think no one else can see. Um, just imagine that it's, it's all being seen. So just, just be cognizant of what your footprint looks like, um, what you're talking about. That can be very revealing too. Um, I have seen before, you know, maybe if you just have a series of bad days over and over and over again, and maybe it was your boss and your boss was being a jerk, whatever. If you're putting out way too many things, consciously or subconsciously, either way, um, the potential employers are looking at you too. And maybe they're gonna think, eh, this person's gonna go down a series of tweets about me one of these days, you know, if something goes wrong. So I'm not saying don't be human and don't use your voice and, and all that. I'm just saying, again, to just kind of be aware of what you're doing out there. Dress code. I mean, um, it it makes sense that if you've got, I mean, I got a lot going on in the background right now. I didn't put up a digital and I didn't cover everything. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of busy stuff going on back there uh, that could be distracting as well. Um, kind of, I, I believe in just being who you are, um, but be reasonable. Uh, if you show up like a slob, if that's the message you want to put out there as your first impression, um, just think about, you know, the impression, even though you're in your house, hey, listen, you guys don't know if I have pants on, right? But I do put on this amazing shirt. Um, so do be, um, a, maybe don't show up exactly the way you would in the office. If you were gonna wear a suit, that's probably not necessary, but put on a nice shirt, I think. Um, ooh, the noise is made by you. Um, the other person might have headphones on who is speaking to you. So if you're doing, kind of gross things like sniffling and gulping on your drink and um, typing, all that sort of thing, um, that, that can be very distracting as well. If you are uh, using your laptop um, camera the way that I am right now, because I couldn't find a webcam anywhere, um, and you slide things around um, on, on the desk, that can also be very distracting. Um, and obviously, I don't have a mouse, so I'm not a good example of, of all the advice I'm giving right now. 
Um, and again, every once in a while, make eye contact um, just so you can kind of connect with people. I'm obviously looking at my slides every once in a while and looking out, but I try to make it a point to look down at you as well. Okay, so another survey that I did uh, was asking people um, when it comes to searching and networking and, and resume writing, which actually I gotta tell you, I, I thought that would be the main thing. Uh, historically, people seem to have trouble with their resumes, but when I did this survey, that wasn't what people were thinking about or, or that's not how they answered. Um, so I, I tried to beat this up a little bit more um, on networking. So as far as job searching goes, everybody knows that we have job boards. Everybody knows who they all are. I didn't list them all. This is not a specific um, endorsement on my part. Uh, I, I will make no specific endorsements of tools or I will not also dox anyone or anything as a tool other than to say, um, and someone did interrupt me at an in-person presentation of this to tell me that I was wrong, but I personally don't think you need to pay as a candidate for anything. As an employer, you do. As an employer, you need to pay for all the things. Um, but some of these boards will tell you that you have to pay to get this en en enhanced um, account or profile to be better seen or better found. Um, I personally, I don't agree. I don't agree because I know that I'm, I'm the person paying up of money to find you um so and so that my my team can find you um i don't think you need to spend your money on, in that way i also think there's way too many volunteers my dms are open i'm happy to tell you who they are who will help you with your resume who will help you as a candidate um i don't think you should pay to have someone write your resume i went to i volunteered uh, for the last several years at uh, a veterans initiative, uh, something I'm just very passionate about. And uh, all of them had professional resumes. Resumes were put together for them. And uh, I got their attention when I said, put away your resumes, they suck. It's professionally prepared, like it's, it mustn't suck, it can't suck. Um, but the professionally written resumes actually um, were in a lot of cases doing a disservice specifically to veterans um they just weren't translating well to you know how their their mos can speak outside of the military um so again please don't pay uh if you're gonna uh also look um at what's out there there's so many things you can read right here on this slide take a screenshot of it there's so many things that are free indeed glassdoor link linkedin the recruiter they're all free you don't need to pay for the enhanced profiles on those things either um, recruiters are out there paying zillions of dollars to find you if you are anywhere out there or if you ever have been even if you're not there anymore they're going to find where you used to be um, they really will they're going to look on github they're going to look at your blogs they're going to look at your social they're going to find you hopefully um, I, I don't I don't want to I'm not not inclusive here uh, but I, I will say that um, that what I'm about to say is statistically often more relevant to females than males um for some reason just again statistically i'm not saying it's everyone it may not be you uh but they are less likely to apply for a position if they don't feel like they check all the boxes in the requirements um i am sure that if we were in a room together and i asked everyone to please raise their hand if the majority of the job descriptions that you see or on a regular basis you see lots and lots of really bad job descriptions i think most of you would raise your hand um i get it i apologize on behalf of uh, hiring companies everywhere um it, it stinks uh, i don't know why it's happening i don't know why it happens uh, we could talk about it for days and days and days and uh and I actually actually do have a dream uh that i could somehow fix it you know make the companies do a better job someday all of them um but don't be afraid to apply for a job that you don't fit all the qualifications for because a lot of them are ridiculous and nobody fits those qualifications i know so many amazing brilliant engineers hackers people who 
don't have a degree, don't have certs. And some of them have written the languages that the job descriptions that are in the same say they want you to understand, right? Or the tools for that matter. Um, so I'm not saying that all of the customers are, are gonna be flexible, but uh, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, so do your research, uh, look around. I love Twitter. I don't have much use for the rest of it, um, but some people do, right? They're out there. So the companies are posting jobs in all those places. Uh, so, so be looking out there. Um, and do research when you're looking at companies that you're interested in. Um, one thing I should say um, is even though everyone knows about all these tools, what they don't all realize and what I didn't realize um, well, a few years ago is that every state has its own employment board. They have to, every single one. So think about the state where you either live or would like to live and go look at their state employment board. All the jobs that are posted are there. They're being scraped out of the applicant tracking systems, even some of the ones that haven't been posted yet. If they're in the applicant tracking system, they're being scraped out and they're being put on the state employment board. So if you're interested in Maryland, go to Maryland's job board. Interested in Texas, go to Texas's job board. They have one. Am I saying that those job boards are going to be super easy to use and intuitive and really, no, they're not going to be great because they're a local government job board, right? So it is what it is. But while you're there, if you find something that you didn't even realize, I had, um, I did an experiment at uh, Besides Tampa and I said, uh, let's all whip out our phones and, and look for the state employment job board um, that you're interested or the state that you're interested in. And if you find a job um, that you didn't even realize, you know, the company was in that state or that they were hiring there, let's talk about it. And there was two or three people who, who could do that. So, um, so take a look there. And then when you find it, if you can't navigate around in on that site very well, because the site, like I said, probably isn't awesome, uh, that's okay too. At least now you know about the job and now you can start looking for it on these job boards that are, are listed here, um, especially the free ones. Um, I know events aren't really happening right now in person. Um, you know, a lot of companies will do um, happy hours and hiring events and things like that. So hopefully we'll get back to normal soon. In the meantime, um, some of the most innovative companies that are kind of ahead on this or responding very well to it are still doing a good job in that regard. Uh, with regard to your resume, um, <laughs> I'm not shocked uh, that people said um, one of the problems that they, the biggest problem was uh, that they just didn't hear a response. I got to tell you, true story, I'm confessing right now. Um, if I were your, your recruiter and, um, and I had, I don't know, I have 20 jobs open and you apply to one of my jobs, there's a good chance, depending on the applicant tracking system, a lot of them are really, really bad. Um, they're so bad and the, um, there's, there's nothing filtering out uh, the volume of people applying. It's so time consuming, you could end up spending the better part of your day just going through uh, resumes um, and and just never getting around to it, right? So um, there's got to be a better way, and we'll get to that too. So we'll talk about what do we do about them not responding, about the recruiters not responding at any point. Um, so please do an I am and I want to be statement. It can be one or two sentences. Don't assume that uh, the person reading your resume, even initially, depending on the size of the company, um, they may have initial resume screeners and then the initial people that take the screening calls. And then they're, depending on the size of the company, there could be so many layers that you have to get through before you get to somebody truly qualified to either make a hiring decision or understand your qualifications. They're given a very specific set of instructions on what to be looking for. So do them a favor because they have fatigue. They've looked at a million resumes today. I really stink at reading resumes. Don't tell my boss. Um, but um, so don't do a lot of dissertations and, and things like that. Just get to the point right at the beginning and then you're going to get right into the, the keywords that they're looking for, right? So you're going to say, I am a systems engineer looking to be a solutions architect. And I love Linux and so on and so forth. Um, then you'll do your chronological. 
and I'd be happy to send out examples of resumes to people. I think I took that out of the presentation. Um, if we were in person, I'd give you a handout. Um, but uh, if a clearance is required or, uh, or if the company that does business with the government, you should take the time to say whether or not you either have or have had or are eligible for and willing to get a clearance. That doesn't mean say your citizenship. That's not a thing that they should ask, but just say eligible for, willing to get something to that effect, because that's important. Um, it used to be in the olden days that uh, PDFs didn't work. The, um, the intake mechanisms couldn't read them, and now they can, so that's okay. It used to be that people got in their heads that there had to be a certain length of a resume, other than not doing a dissertation and not making it impossible for me to get to the point. Um, don't be afraid to give a lot of details. Don't feel like you have to be on one or two pages. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Um, again, no one's responding. You just applied. So you applied, you applied to my company and you haven't heard anything back or you got the initial message, but then you still didn't hear anything back. What are you going to do about that? So probably um, if you have a LinkedIn account, that's where I would start. And again, that's not me saying uh, anything about LinkedIn other than most recruiters are there. Um, so you're going to go there. It may or may not be the recruiter for that position. And most of them have their direct messages open. You're going to go in and you're going to say, hey, it's me. I applied for this specific job and I look forward to hearing back from you. And you're going to give them one day to get back to you. If that doesn't work. Do a little bit of research and look at who might be the operational head of the division where that job is. You're not going to have the full breakdown of the org chart, but you can say, hmm, VP of such and thus. That looks like where this job would fall, probably, maybe. Hi, VP of such and thus. I applied for such and thus a job, and I can't wait to hear back. Let me know if you need anything. And then if that doesn't work, I want you to send me a direct message on Twitter and tell me it didn't work. I'll be shocked. Uh, I will seriously be shocked. So do that. Um, and, and you're doing that to remind them because maybe they forgot or maybe they lost track or they have 20 other jobs and 50 other candidates per job, something like that. Just do them that polite favor of sending them a little message. Um, don't be afraid to, and please take a moment to, when appropriate, uh, especially as you go, go further, in, further in your career, um, you are going to have a lot of different mix of skills. Um, take a moment to go through the job description and customize um, even with just your opening statement about what you want to be so they aren't confused about, I see so many things going on in this resume, I, I, I'm not sure what in the world they want, right? And also be aware that um, the best recruiters, hopefully every single person that works for me, <laughs> um, but the best recruiters are going to make the initial conversation with you about you not just your match to that specific position, but what you enjoy doing, what you don't enjoy doing, what you wanna do next, because they're gonna be aware of things that aren't even on the job boards, right? So um, make this about, about you. So that's the perfect transition into the interview stage. You're doing research on the company, you're finding out about the people in that company, you're looking at some of the key players there. Um, if you do your research on social and you find out maybe where they're talking, maybe you're going to run through the speaker list for San Antonio B-Sides today, and you're going to notice um, where people work. And if it's a company that you're interested in, now you have kind of that someone that you can make a connection to, either through social or, in this case, through this event that is happening today where this is the way that we're networking now, since we can't walk around and talk to each other in the hallways and trade badges and stuff. Um, so you're gonna do the research, you're gonna find out who's speaking there. Huh, I wonder who they follow on social and who follows them? What are they talking about? Are they talking about anything that is relevant to me that I can, that I can contribute to and that I can participate in and start having those conversations, right? That's the new way to network. Um, so you're going to do that little bit of research, you know, going into the interview, 
um, if you have the opportunity, try to answer as many questions as you can in the form of a story. Um, and then does your resume support these stories? And don't be afraid to, if you, if you can, uh, talk about something that you either failed at or struggled with, and then that's gonna in, give you the opportunity to show the people that you're talking to how you solved that problem, what you learned from that problem. And then please, this is the best part. And this is the part where hiring managers should be listening to. Um, start, when they say at the end, that proverbial, do you have any questions for me? You say, look at them as a person, whether it's a panel or not, and give them a chance to say, well, how long have you been here? Hmm. Um, what, what have you learned lately? What's the top thing you learned this year? That's my favorite question. When you catch the interviewer off guard with something like that, um, they're going to become a person and not an interviewer. And they're going to start telling you stories. And it's gonna be very revealing to you, the candidate, about the company. Um, heck, if they haven't learned anything this year, that's something to think about, really. Um, ask them what challenges they had and how that turned out. Right. And maybe they'll say, well, yeah, now that you mention it, uh, or what hesitation did you have coming into this job? This is you, the candidate, asking the interviewer a question like that. Did you have any hesitation? Did, did you have other options? Why did you choose this? Are you glad you chose it? You're going to start interviewing them and they're going to tell you so much. Right. It's going to be great for you and them, actually. Um, this is their chance to tell you, you know what? As a matter of fact, I was really nervous about this job because I don't know, I uh, it said you had to said you had to know medical aid, and I don't know that. Um, but I was given the opportunity to go to a workshop or go to a conference or uh, get set up in a mentoring situation with one of my coworkers, and now I know it, now I teach it to people, right? So that's a cool story. Um, it's gonna be good for you and them. Um, so remember to do that. And then hopefully, if you get them thinking about what challenges they had, what hesitations they had coming into the position with the company, and then they give you the opportunity, or they give the opportunity to say how it turned out, then you know what to expect in terms of, um, how some of your challenges will be faced there as well. So I really, really want you to be yourself as much as possible. Um, when I actually, when I interviewed for the job I have now, uh, four years ago, I had blue hair. And I remember thinking, well, it was half blue. And I remember thinking, should I like, I'm gonna meet all the, I'm gonna meet like the CEO and all the executives, should I like, my hair in a bun or what should I do and then I was like eh, eh, this is me <laughs> do they like me or do they not like me um be honest be exactly who you are when I say that I liken it to dating I I actually don't really I don't have any uh, actual dating experience um or very very little but I imagine that if you showed up for a date and you sat down and you were like Yes, yes, I do. I, I love kids. I love to travel. I do go to church. I don't go to church. If you aren't yourself in that first date and the relationship turns into a relationship, I suspect that um, you, have, you have made it certain that it's not going to end well, right? So don't go to the interview saying, I love solving problems. I love working on a team. I love being all by myself. Uh, don't be afraid to tell exactly what it is because more than likely, there's more than one opportunity in the company. And while you're telling them exactly who you are, they're gonna say, you know what? There's not an exact match for you with the job you apply for, but there's this. or." I expect that soon there will be this. This is how you can pave the way for where you end up to be closer to what is best and ideal for you. When I say it's okay to pivot, what do I mean? 
Um, what I mean is actually in the company where I am, uh, one of the VPs of one of the cyber divisions used to work in contracts. One of the senior help desk technicians used to work in HR. One of my recruiters keeps getting AWS certs and stuff like that. Uh, one of my recruiters became a scrum master. Uh, this is the type of situation where you can look around you and change what you're doing. Uh, I'd mentioned at the beginning that I, I, I used to uh, be a software developer. I used to run a help desk to build help desks. Um, and now I run a recruiting department. So that's okay. It's okay to pivot um, as many times as you need to. When you are negotiating, please never ever tell them how much you make. If they stay on the on the application, fill in your current salary. The application probably hasn't been updated in the last 10 years. It's not okay. You do not have to put it. You don't have to tell them your salary. Frankly, the amount of money that you currently make has literally nothing to do with the amount of money that you should be making based on your bona fide occupational qualifications and your skills and your education and your clearance level and the geographical location where you're living. Those are the things that should determine uh, how much money you're making. So please don't tell anybody how much money you're making. Um, when the recruiter starts, and listen, uh, it's going to be at different levels. Um, it may be from the very first phone call, and I get that it's awkward when they say, how much money do you want to make? This is where you can speak in ranges if you need to. And you can say, well, I'm looking at this, or I'm seeing offers in this area, or in this range. You can speak in ranges. And then think about other things that matter to you. Instead of comp plans, stock options, the ability to work remotely, um, the ability to go to conferences and travel and educational benefits, 401k. There's a million things that you need to think about, including as your total comp, what really super duper matters to you. Um, so don't be afraid to say those things as well. Say, so you know what? Uh, I really am looking for a situation where I can take off four weeks a year, twice a year, whatever the case may be, right? So think about what is ideal for you. And remember I said at the beginning that depending on where you are in your candidacy, you're gonna be more or less flexible uh, based on the things that you ask for. But think about what matters to you the most. Whip out a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, make columns about the things that are the most important to you and try to get those boxes checked uh, when you are negotiating. And think about talking to um, your peers or anyone that you trust in um, either the hiring managers um, community or recruiting community who can also help you and coach you in that area. Um, and you don't have to give exact answers when you get to offer stage. Always think about it. Always, always sleep on it. And then run it by somebody. And say, you know, especially if you have someone in the recruiting field that you can talk to, you can say, hey, do you mind if I let you know what I was offered? And, and what do you think of this? Does this sound about right? Is this what I should be expecting at this point? Um, you know, I had, uh, I had a, a person recently, fairly recently, uh, who she just graduated from her master's program. And it took, it took two or three, it took two or three uh, go arounds before everything matched up. But frankly, um, there was not just the professional experience through internships, and then obviously the education getting the master's. Um, but there's value in, and especially in our community, I would say probably everybody um, hearing this and everybody visiting here, um, there's a lot of value in what you do in our community. I could talk for a whole entire day, I'm trying to look at clock, about um, are you doing CTFs? Are you speaking at conferences? Are you writing blog posts? What sort of things are you doing um, 
it, within the community. Um, so when you're negotiating, think about think about those things too, right? That there's value in those things that you were a community volunteer or that you participated or that you um, designed and delivered workshops uh, to teach people, um, that you mentored people in school or at work. Those things are cool. Don't forget to uh, to to tout those things and to pat yourself on the back for them because they're valuable. It does not ever hurt to ask. Um, think about if it really matters, right? If you're gonna ask for eight weeks of vacation, I'm gonna wonder how often you work, what the heck you're doing for eight weeks personally. But if that matters to you, uh, there's, no, there's no harm. It is a lot harder, I will say, this is 100% true, it's a lot harder to jump from where you are in a company, unfortunately, to where you want to be or need to be, if you didn't negotiate right off the bat, if you uh, didn't do well, but you love the company, but you think they're underpaying you, it's just harder. I don't know why. Um, sometimes you have to leave to get more money. Um, thanks. Um, I often, I personally, when the current company counter offers people, I often say to myself, if I was worth that, why wasn't I always making it, right? So if I make you an offer, your company finds out about it, and the first thing they say is, where are you going? And what they offer you? And you tell them, and they're like, oh, we can match it. <laughs> well, you know what I think? I think then you should have already been paying me that. And you're going to be looking to get rid of me next. You don't want me to leave right now because you don't want to have to replace me. But I don't know, that's just my personal opinion about that. Um, so think about what the market is paying, what clearances are worth, what specific, specific locations are worth based on cost of living, stuff like that. And you can do some research on those things as well. A lot of uh, websites out there for that. And we made it all the way to questions and answers if we have any. I can see the red thing. Kirsten, we do have a couple of questions that are originating from the breakout uh, thread. Um, first question, can you talk more about internal mobility to starting off in the right place? Ask the question again. Can you talk more about the internal mobility to starting off in the right place? I'm not sure I understand the question, but I, I do. I, I, if they're saying what I think they're saying, people are always wondering about, um, like when I said starting off in the right place and pivoting around, stuff like that, if that's what they mean. Um, people are always wondering how to break in. Uh, see these conversations talk all the time about how to get into cybersecurity. Um, every company is going to be different, I think. Um, it, it helps. Again, depending on the size of the company, it helps to be looking at what else is happening there. Look at your own company's job board. Is the company advertising for a position that you would like to fill? You're not 100% sure you're qualified for it or you'd like to be qualified for it. I would challenge you to, to work through HR or through your operations manager, really. They should be able to do this. They should be able to find a way to make this happen. Work through your manager and find out how can I fill that position for you or how can I get on a track or a path to become qualified for that position. I do see Kim Stevens' question, I think. How did how did I get the survey information? All of the surveys that I that I put in my slides, I those are just Twitter surveys. So they're not scientific surveys. Um, I didn't grab them off of a website or anything crazy like that. I just I just posted them on Twitter and um, took screen grabs of them. That's where, where that came from. And I, I have it written down somewhere, but there was maybe, I don't know, maybe 500 people responded, not a lot. Okay, we have another question that uh, stems from the breakout. Um, can you provide your thoughts on uh, the saying that you should never accept the, uh, this individual says, I've always heard to never accept the counter offer. Once you make known that you're looking, uh, you could be looked at as dead weight. Heard this many times from those who accept the counter, 
then get the raise and get passed up for promotion set to the side, et cetera. What are your thoughts on that? So I don't want the companies that are countering people that they truly value and that they intend to keep to, to be upset that I said it. But um, if my advice to people is usually not to take it simply because I feel like if if you if they wanted to give you what they're offering to you now, you never would have been looking and they would have already given it to you. Maybe if you want to give them a little slack because you never bothered to mention that you were unhappy, um, then the conversation can open up. It's going to come down to communication, frankly. And if you trust them and you feel valued by them. Thank you. I thought you. I thought the question was going to be never accept the first offer. I will <laughs> tell you. I will tell you. Um, if you look at my Twitter feed today, uh, it was is in this. Uh, I was in a, um, what do you call it, like one of those mega threads, and I said, yeah, but I don't do it that way because I'm weird. I don't care about your degree or your certs because I'm weird. Um, I also never lowball people. Never have, and I never will. Maybe all the hiring managers I've ever worked for are like, really, thanks for costing me all that money, but I just don't see the point, right? Um, if I know what I can do for you, um, I always am going to do the very best for you, and, and recruiters should do that. They should do the very best for you. Does that mean that if they didn't, they come at you with an offer? If I say that I'm doing the best I can for you, then I am. Does that mean that there's no wiggle room? Well, maybe there is because I don't, I'm not the PL holder, right? So if you said, person said this was the best she could do, but I need more. So I'm not going to talk to person anymore. <clears throat> um, I'm still going to fight for you, or my recruiters are going to fight for you. Um, so again, it's going to come down to them wanting you, valuing you, and caring about you.